Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. We are the 28th of March, 2023. Today, around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verharten, Kevin Martins, Hervé Lemur, and Mark Waits. Let's start with the announcements. Uh, the weekly release 2.397 is currently being packaged. The release and the signing of the war went perfectly fine. The packages, though, uh, were in uh, were in failures. We are currently watching the last builds. We had to fix some elements. Uh, some issues came from uh, puppet management changes that I did last week. And some elements where uh, we we underevaluated the amount of requests of IP in a subnet that we are using a new instance. Overall, these are these are all just minor hiccups that were a bit stressful for us. However, everything is overall going really great. The new release CI controller on the new private cluster is behaving as expected with agents on their own subnets different from infra ci so we are on a very nice state that's a nice job uh, so i hope we should be able to finish the packages uh, after that meeting if it's not already finished uh, the when i started the zoom call we were waiting for uh, microsoft windows to pull another microsoft windows docker image and this will wait in last 10 to 20 minutes, so we have plenty of time. Synchronizing mirror now. So Windows oh, Windows yes. Windows packaging is done. Okay, so it's in a good direction. We might, we could have issues at the end of the packages, but the critical part, which is the release part, has been done successfully. Uh, I haven't checked the war signature though. We will see uh, in a few minutes. Hmm. Um, the war signature should be signature okay the war the war signing is still using this digicert signing certificate right so it'll be valid yes, but only but for a few used, more but, days uh, the maven is uh, fed both the gpg key and the jit cert and it's ah, using both i see and could someone launch the uh the docker container build process it's far enough along now or maybe it's already been done we Which have to wait for soon. we we need for the package to be for the package steps step if i'm not mistaken oh i thought it only depended on the war file published to, to artif oh. to artifactory yeah um, no that should be okay yeah yeah can i ask someone with access to trusted ci to run the controller master branch yes Thanks, folks. Just makes it faster for me to get started on the tests. Yeah, so 397 is not yet published as a container image. Packaging is eating a few minor hiccups, only delaying of one, two arrows. We have fixed issues. Next steps, Docker packaging and the last checklist items later today. Just, just to be sure, it's a master in controller Jenkins CI Docker. You want me to That's the one. Yes, thank you. Exactly. Oops. Is there anything else about the weekly release? Your packaging build has finished. Nice. Um, can I ask someone to help me on the notes? Just to add the blog post instructions i consider the announcement part of this notes as another way to communicate these two users 
be added. Mm -hmm. I want the tool stop being smart. I am not. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that new GPG key is, uh, that's the second announcement. We have a new GPG key uh, valid for three years that will sign the new Jenkins release. Uh, so the weekly today used that new GPG key, so uses it. And the next LTS next week will use the new, the new key. Um, there is no problem for, for you to import that new key already today. And so when you will upgrade to the new weekly or LTS line if next week, that will automatically pick the new key ID. Uh, there is a blog post I did in the notes. Please uh, read the blog post to follow instruction for this one. Do you have other announcement, folks? Nope. Okay, so we... sorry. Yes, go ahead. It's the last day to vote for your Jenkins contributor today. Absolutely forgot about that. Yes, last day to vote for your Jenkins contributor. Absolutely forgot about nomination and vote for that. Thanks, Hervé. No more, no other announcements. Okay. Uh, upcoming calendar next weekly, next week as usual. Uh, that will be 4th of April. The new LTS will be 5th of April. Is that correct? Yes, I already written. Thanks. I'm trying to homogenize the. <laughs> the dates in American standard. <laughs> um, so the next LTS will happen Wednesday next week. That should use the new GPG key and hopefully the new DigiCert certificates, I hope. Um, I haven't seen any announcement on security advisories. Let's check all together. The last one was the 21 of March, so none. Next major event, we have Devox France in Paris. It's uh, April 12 through four, 12, uh, is it 14 and 15? 12 to 14, yeah. Um, yes, do you have other major events? We had some last week, but I don't remember. Okay. Uh, anything else to add or can we proceed to the tasks? One, two, three, okay, let's start. <clears throat> so this week, uh, wow, well, were we able to achieve? Uh, thanks Alex Brandes for taking care of a maintainer request about the Gradle plugin. Um, there was an issue about uh, dependency on the build of a plugin. Thanks, Hervé, for managing that part. The summary is uh, this plugin was using a dependency and the remote Maven repository, which is not mirrored inside repo Jenkins CI. That's an external one. So since we put everything on the ACP as expected, the build failed because it wasn't able to get that dependency. Uh, Hervé, if I understand correctly, you on short term to allow the contributors to cut a release and fix the build, you added an exception with the ID they use on the POMXML for that repository. So ACP does not, uh, is not used and bypass. Uh, the builds are directly eating that repository, allowing them to get uh, that thing. Uh, there is a question asked on the mailing lists about should we add that external repository to uh, as a mirror inside Chiffrog so we should remove that exception. 
or should they switch to it's a Jackson API dependency? So should they switch to a normal the new group ID artifact ID that might or might not be on GFrog? I don't know. But we have a point where we have a plugin that come from a that come from an external repository. And in that case, they are using external dependency that we don't control. So there is a point here we should follow up with these maintainers uh, to avoid any external repo. Does it make sense for everyone? OK, so let's follow up on the uh, mailing list, if it's OK for everyone. I haven't checked if you, we got answer, but that should be the follow up. Because that start to move outside um, the infra uh, scope unless we need to add uh, the mirror in GFrog. We were able to close the apply to Docker open source program. Uh, just a side note, I still sent an email to Docker because Jenkins I Infra and Jenkins for Eval Docker organization uh, were expected to already be on part of that program since one year. I'm not sure if they forgot or, or there was a misunderstanding. Uh, we closed the issue because Docker uh, went back and finally canceled the depreciation of the free team, which these two organizations and the legacy Jenkins CI were, are using. Anyway, I will just push on Docker to see if they can move this organization under the OSS. Because for us, in terms of security management, that will allow us to grant more than three administrators. Uh, and that should also avoid rate limiting for these images, which is quite useful. Um, those two organizations could be moved to alternative. The good thing of that issue is that we raised the question, maybe we should switch the images to a GitHub container registry or another one, depending on the, the main. The main question is what kind of role base and permission do we want? What kind of airbag pattern do we want? The problem of Docker Hub organization is that a lot of, uh, we don't have the scope of each repository, each image. We cannot separate concern while we can on GitHub access. No, the issue is closed. No action expected. Uh, the rest will be Docker putting them on OSS and we can think about this repository pattern later. Next issue, updates center job is failing. Uh, that was an old issue. We had to add as code in Puppet some changes, in particular the fact that most of the package machine has some untracked dependencies. For instance, BlobXFR, which is a command line tool used to synchronize plugins call release from that machine to another location, mirrors at least. That tool is a kind of air sync, but for Microsoft Azure Blob Storage. And that tool, even though it could be replaced by the AZ command line, as Hervé opened an issue for that, that tool is still required by the mirrors and the scripts. So we had to move this as code to avoid byte surprises. Why wasn't it as code? Because it's a legacy thing that was done manually uh, at least five years ago. We have been hit by this one. Please note that by fixing this, I created issues that we had to fix. Uh, we lost the authorized key uh, on that machine for the mirror brain user. I still don't understand why this user is used for the release process, but that broke the packaging process earlier today. We fixed the issue manually on the machine. So expect a new pull request to add that authorized key back inside the system. We were able to close the issue now that everything has been fixed as code and BlobXFR is updated to its last available version. So the next step will be modernization with either AZ command line or a container or both. No short-term action expected here. Any question? Jenkins Jira issue. I don't remember what was that issue. Okay, someone created an issue and asked on Jira and asked for deletion. Thanks, Mark, for managing this one. Or yeah, I'm, or I'm glad that I'm glad that the user was willing to just have it deleted. There's, I saw that there were other ways to delete history, but they are much more heroic. Deleting the bug was easy. 
make sense. We had two issues closed as not planned. One issue was a wrong issue tracker, and the other, I closed it because after one week without feedback from a user requesting uh, an email for the account Jenkins IO, no answer back from the user, no email, so I've closed the issue. Uh, I, don't, I never know if it was a, a naive tentative to eject an account, or if it's someone that just was fed up and stopped trying to create an account. That might be that. If that's, sorry for, for this, but that's why I'm closing the issue after one week without answer. Of course, if the user reopen, we will fix the issue. <coughs> Did we forget something that we were able to close and we can forget about? Or can we go to the work in progress? Let's switch to the work in progress. That week, this week was, yeah, it's pretty intense. First, new GPG key. So a few details that we learn along the way. First of all, uh, we must use an RSA, RSA key, the new uh, cryptographic algorithm that we use for the first tentative for a new key are unsupported on the Red Hat distributions. So, so for clarity, ED25519, calling it a new cryptographic algorithm is, is a bit of a stretch. It's been around for many, many years, but Red Hat has not included it, whether we like it or not. But yeah. Sorry, it's, baby, it's, this is it's, a new it's technology. hardly a new algorithm in my world, but hey, I understand <laughs> they don't support it. And so we're stuck. For, for, for being clear, AWS only support that for SSH servers from cloud init only since one year. So it's quite recent, right? Oh, don't get me started on why, yeah, okay. So that new key has been added next to the existing current key that expire only Thursday. So we can, uh, we can switch in and off. Uh, we had updated the release properties process that went with the new key. Uh, thanks, Alex. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Kevin, for working on the different communication channels. Uh, we might have forgotten some, but more communication is won't kill here. So we have a blog post. We have the whole package release process that should have been updated for the weekly, so we can verify if the new HTML static files are okay. There is a, there has been a tweet. We announced that on IRC and Gitter. It has been also announced on Community Jenkins and also pull request on the Jenkins documentation. So we have a lot of communication channel. If you see others, don't hesitate. Thanks Hervé for adding on status Jenkins IO as well, a notice that will stay one or two weeks. That's also a good idea. Um, after I propose that we send an email to the developer mailing list and infrastructure today after the weekly, if it's okay for everyone, I will we take care of this one. We can also add the blog post uh, to the carousel, to the website uh, Jumbotron. Oh, good point. May I ask you to either raise an issue on Jenkins IO yeah, or, or I, I think we could invite Kevin Kevin Martins to yeah. do that because <laughs> Kevin can he, he may never have done a, a post to the uh to the jumbotron so all the better this sounds like a great opportunity for Kevin sorry to use the word opportunity in this case to mean a <laughs> volunteer opportunity yeah exactly Kevin feels voluntold that's right. <laughs> um, this issue will be closable after the LTS release will have been generated with the new GPG key. And after we will have added a calendar event in three years with a six month reminder, just to be sure <laughs> that we don't forget it and we have enough time to make the announcement in the future. Well, and, and thank you for putting that suffix on the on the file name, because now we can the next time use a different file name and we can just keep doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give back to Caesar what what is owned by Caesar. I 
get the inspiration from Datadog documentation. I've added the link on the issue because they have a very well explained uh, process for rotating their package key. They did that last year and we had to update and I found their instruction pretty clear and they kept both keys. Also Ashicorp did that in 2020. So that makes sense when we rotate key to have shorter time, three years is quite enough. One month per year is a bit of pain for end users. Three years is interesting. And when we keep the two, the two keys, then we can have a smooth change for end users. Um, so is there something else about the GPG key? So that one moves to the next milestone, obviously, until it's close, closable. Next issue, introduce an artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. So it appear that we had issues on the bomb builds in sounds like uh, very weird cases. Um, since we removed the EC2 agent and decreased the capacity of CI Jenkins IO to run an AWS agent, most of the workload, particularly the bomb builds, are running on DigitalOcean. Only on DigitalOcean, these agents use the local ACP that runs inside DigitalOcean. And as we understand, almost all the bomb builds using this one are failing with a weird error. The error uh, looked client side, but we cannot be 100% sure. As per Hervé researches, no, no error were seen on server side. So we are trying to reproduce to be sure that it's not that we lost the error or the pod were terminating or something happened. The initial researches from Hervé are pointing, are pointing to HTTP client in Java with a multi-thread that are, that are not closing correctly the connection at the right moment. And that and the fact that it happened after a long time, so a Java process run for a long time before starting losing elements, that could or could not be on that direction. Um, another thing to check would be to, to see if we can uncache the, artif the, artifact or, uh, the artifact that are in error, but I'm not sure and I haven't follow up if it's always the same artifact failing or if it's a bunch of random artifacts that could also help. That's the current status. Right now, there is no blocker in the sense that the bomb build uh, can be run without the ACP, but it's really more than just an annoyance because yeah, that's, that means directly eating the bandwidth on GFROG, which is counterproductive for us. That, that won't go notice since I understand that uh, 14 terabyte of bandwidth might disappear magically next month. However, that's still a, a top priority item to be fixed. Hervé, is there something else new on that topic? I don't think you had the material time to deep dive given the, the weekly release, but I just wanted to ask if in case I forgot something. Anything else to add, or is it okay for this one? Okay, so that one. Yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thanks for the work. So I'm adding that issue on the next milestone, as usual. Next issue is add cluster, a new cluster private gates. So that one is almost closable, if I understand correctly, because today we validated that the new release CI Jenkins instance that was migrated Friday from the legacy public cluster to the new private cluster um, worked quite well. There are some cleanup steps remaining, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so that one should be closable during the next milestone. We just validated that it worked as expected. There isn't any other service to be migrated on the private cluster. So once cleaned up, uh, we can proceed with the public cluster that time. So great job on this one. That's a long running task. So finally, we get there. <coughs> any question, things I could have forgot? 
Okay, so let's move that one to the next milestone. Next issue, EC2 are not available. So what happened is that a combination of misconfiguration and uh, world behavior of the EC2 plugin for spawning virtual machine agent from Jenkins controllers um, created a lot of long running machines that uh, that cost us a lot this month. So in reaction, in order to leverage the amount of billing going in AWS, we removed any kind of virtual machine from CI Jenkins IO. We drastically decreased the amount of uh, scalability capacity for CI Jenkins IO on container agents from 150 max pod to 30. And Stefan finished earlier today on Infra CI Jenkins IO, the virtual machine that we use for running Docker, uh, the Docker commands. We're using EC2 while the controller is running on Azure. So for that one, we are definitively getting away from EC2. So now the Linux, Intel, and Windows 2019 agents are running on Azure VM. So thanks, Stefan. Everything is as code, including the credentials. So the last miles are now uh, studying the possibility to use IRM virtual machine on Azure because we are using since uh, one year and a half these kind of instances in uh, directly inside EC2. But uh, now Azure supports that since December. So Stefan is working on uh, trying to build new images that might need a bit of configuration on our sites, but that should allow us to stop using EC2 at all from Infra CI. That would be a nice thing. Did I miss something or something else to add? Nope. So thanks, uh, Stefan, for that work. Um, <clears throat> if it's okay for you, uh, we should, if you can report on that issue, for me, it's closable because the next step will be a separated issue about the IRM part that deserve a whole issue. Okay. So if you're okay to get to have a report there listing what kind of instances did we remove, so we should be able to close that issue because the initial problem is gone. So for me, that one can be closed and there isn't any work. And your mission will be to open a new issue about the IRM migration, of course. Looks good? Is there any question or something to add or that I could have forgotten on that topic? No, I think it's good. Next one, out of space on CI Jenkins age on bomb builds. Uh, so Hervé, if I understand correctly, the last steps are adding uh, volumes for slash TMP and the Jenkins home on the pod templates. And once validated, we should be able to close the issue. Is there something else to add on that issue? So I'm adding it to the next milestone, is that okay? Yes. A realign repo Jenkins CI org mission. Uh, summary, nothing done, still to be done. The expected work is uh, um, working on a uh, highly available LDAP, which I wasn't able to to work on. I'm adding it to the next milestone. <coughs> next issue, credential for CI Jenkins IO expired. Uh, the goal is to manage as code on the Terraform Azure uh, all the credentials and associated resources that CI Jenkins IO uses for its agents. Uh, by starting to work and on this task and importing, I nearly broke and deleted CI Jenkins IO as a consequence of the production issue we did. So I'm sorry for that. I should be more careful and I will try to not delete CI Jenkins IO next time. Right now, CI Jenkins IO is currently in incident. It's not able to spawn virtual machines. So we should uh, uh, fix that issue uh, today after that meeting. Um, mm -hmm. 
one point this one is spawning virtual machine inside an Azure subnet, which has all the permission and working as expected. Uh, that subnet is not tracked on Terraform as well. So I will try to, uh, to also add it after the issue is fixed and the production is back. So moving it to the next milestone as usual. Um, we weren't able to walk about the agent instability uh, raised by James Nord. However, he did not answer. So I'm prone to, um, yeah, I'm, uh, that needs more diagnostic given the current state since we removed the EC2 agents. So if you no one objects, I will move it to the next milestone with the, with no answer from James and no time to diagnose, I will close because it wasn't reproduced. Any objection on moving it one week? Time for us to carefully check with the currency agent in SAIO status. Okay. Uh, grant limited access to release CI to some security team folks. That one is partially done, but we still need some work on that. Is that correct, Hervé? Um, as I yes, understand, it was, yep, sorry, go ahead. It was uh, postponed. Uh until we migrated the uh, release CI. Okay. Can I ask you to report uh, at least the, with links to the pull request and or issues about VPN access because that was required for Kevin. And we need to check that Yaroslav either already has access to the private VPN or open an issue for that one. And then we will have a uh, airbag set up to do on release CI, but the VPN port uh, was treated by URV. So that's why I'm asking for just a quick report, if you don't mind. Yes. And we should have the time to finish the permission part on release CI uh, this week. Any question or things I forgot? Nope. Next step, grant limited, uh, sorry, document, code signing certificate and renew the signer certificates. So the status is uh, yesterday we received an email from Fatih from the CDF. Uh, so it looks like that uh, the, the certificate is being renewed. Uh, thanks Mark for uh, putting the emphasis on that we need that uh, as soon as possible. I'm not sure if we will have the new certificate before the 30th of March, however, Fatty was positive that we should uh, be able to do it uh, before next LTS. Ideally, if it, we can have it for the next wiki, that should be perfect. For a reminder, the impact will be on people using the Jenkins.msi installer on Windows. Starting Friday, 31 of March, they will see error about the fact that its installer is not signed by Microsoft or by a, a trusted developer. And the people who are checking the WAR file, not only it has to be uh, checked through GPG, GPG key for uh, checking the metadata, but also it's signed by that trusted certificate. So if you have that kind of process, you will have error Friday until you update to a new version with the new certificate. So these issues are as well moving to the next milestone automatically. Any question, folks? No. Okay, so now let's review if we had new issues incoming since last week that we haven't triaged yet. So I'm opening the list of issues on the L desk. So someone named Stefan Merl created a new <laughs> issue about add Terraform role and permission for Azure on trusted CI and third CI. So as a reminder, that issue is to track what we learn on CERT CI, uh, we should uh, merge it back to trusted and vice versa. The goal is to work on our Terraform Azure permission model. Stefan, is that okay if we add this issue to the next milestone? Yes, please. Cool, thanks for opening the issue. I'm not completely sure there are things to change on third CI. For me, it should be the base model, at least for trusted. Because- uh, 
If I but, remember correctly, we did change something the last time on the Jenkins Infra that we said that could be oh, great. Oh, true that. that. But I but I forgot what. True that. True that. Uh, okay, so we might have minor changes. Uh, yeah, cherry pick. Uh, just a note about CompuWare and BMC plugin removal. So BMC did what they had to do with the GitHub Trust Safety. GitHub confirmed yesterday, really late, that it's okay finally. So Daniel, thanks Daniel, uh, took back all the plugins and the, is putting back the plugin to distribution. No action expected for us folks, but let's keep an eye just in case if something is going wrong, but uh, the update center is working as expected. So let's continue putting the infrastructure in good shape and that should be uh, really smart. <coughs> um, last week created an issue about migrating from service principle to workload identity, our Jenkins controller in Azure. So they should not require any credential. Um, that one is in, in the backlog. Uh, I don't expect to be able to work on its next milestone. So uh, I'm just putting it away. Do we have a new issue? No new issue. If it's okay for everyone, I will want to add uh, two issues on the upcoming milestone. Sunset the Robo Butler service. So it's a for so that service we use on I think it's let use on one of the OSU SL sponsored virtual machine where a confluence was running before it went to the Linux Foundation hosting and then was stopped at all. Um, and that, on that machine it's Edamami, sorry. And that machine was also hosting the former uh, meeting notes. And that bot, Robo Butler, was used on IRC for both the board and the infra meetings, like the one today. And they were using the bots to take care. So the notes were taken on the IRC channels for both kind of meetings, and then were automatically published on an Apache server. Uh, we had an issue of, um, a few months ago that uh, we don't know why and how, but the meeting notes and the content of the doc root of that Apache was deleted a few weeks, month ago. So everything was retrieved and put on a GitHub page and the board is managing now their own notes. So now that we don't use that, uh, the DNS was changed to GitHub page. So there is nothing pointing to that machine anymore and the Apache server has been shut down. So the goal now is to remove all the resources on Puppet and also on the virtual machine and GitHub so we can sunset that service definitively. That one should be quick. I tried an exhaustive list, so yeah. Uh, I'm I'm volunteering, but if anyone wants to help or participate on that, don't hesitate. Add yourself as assignee and specify on a comment what do you want to work on on that list of elements. And finally, the last item I want to add is the Ubuntu 22.04 migration. We started to work on that and that one is quite important. So just check Ubuntu 18.04, AKA Bionic. Why? Ah, uh, my GitHub is absolutely frozen. Okay, better. Uh, the upgrade campaign. So I'm adding this to the next milestone. We need to work on that now. That's our next priority. <clears throat> Uh, Hervé already did uh, the EV lifting for the Packer images. So this week later, we will release first a new minor version of the Packer templates that will feature Maven 3.9.1 instead of 3.9.0. And once we will have deployed that uh, version, the goal will be to switch the Packer image base from Ubuntu 20 to Ubuntu 22. That's the first step. Um, Stefan, you will have some work on this one by creating a new set of machine for trusted CI on Azure that will automatically um, cover the upgrade of trusted CI virtual machine that are running on EC2 today. They will jump directly to Ubuntu 22. 
For the controller, Trusted CI, the risk is low because it's only running a Docker container. So you don't have to care about the Ubuntu version. We might have some differences for the trusted agent though, but I'm not really stressed out by that one because most of the tooling is not Python or whatever where tooling is only GDK. And we use Timurin. So that should be quite easy. That will be the next step. And for Erwin and I, there will be a few Docker images using um, Ubuntu 19 that are, for instance, the VPN is one of them. Finally, the, the, the biggest one will be the Docker packaging. That one is already on Ubuntu 22, but the PKG virtual machine, you know, the one that is always causing us trouble. Uh, the proposal uh, we discussed last week on that meeting was to start with a Docker image for running the package port. The tricky area here is that that machine uh, cannot is risky to upgrade in place because it's a single machine and we will want to split that machine on different areas. Mostly the package port should be handled by release CI automatically. So for this one, we cannot upgrade from 18 to 20 that will break the release process. We need absolutely to upgrade to 22. By doing that, that will break all the Python and also all the Debian repository things. That's why if we can switch the release process script from whatever they do today to running on a Docker run Jenkins CI infra packaging. Uh, we should have a 18 line. That should be a first step. And then we can upgrade to 22. And for the rest of the virtual machine, we should be able to run APT distribution upgrade on each. But that's, let's start with trusted VPN packaging and Packer images. That's my proposal. Uh, it's not mandatory. If you have counter proposal or other ideas, or don't hesitate. Okay, for you folks. Um, that's all for me on what I wanted to add. Are there other other thing you want to talk about? Hervé, maybe public, we can move back from backlog the public gates migration. Yes. Do you feel you will have the time to work yeah. on that or do you want a planning um, updates eventually? Let's start weeks like that and I'll put it in the milestone if we okay. have time. Makes sense. That's all for me. Is there something else to add, folks? Oh, all good. Okay, yeah, cool. All good, yeah. So I will stop recording and screen sharing and see you next week. Bye. So stop this one. Stop recording.